Hello, viewers. Assalamu alaikum. Hope everyone is fine and well. Here, a uh, warm welcome to Winnie Given Bangladesh online live session with the University of Reading. A big thanks for watching from wherever you are in the world. My name is Emily Shori Hussain, and I'm the country manager here at Win Education Bangladesh. And I'm delighted to be hosting today's virtual online live session. We know that you might have a lot of questions today, and we'd love to hear from you. So do put this into the chat, and we will be answering this at the end of the live session. Today, we brought you a very renowned top in public university in the UK, University of Reading. Now, I would like to invite our guest, Mr. Ludo, to introduce himself and give a short presentation about the university. Over to you, Ludo. Perfect. Thank you, Sheriff. Welcome, everyone. I'm Ludo, the Regional Manager for South Asia here at University of Reading. And it is a pleasure for me to be here and to be invited to these great sessions. Um, before we start into the sessions as well, let me also share my, my contacts. And if you want to be in contact with me later on, feel free to contact at my email address, uh, my personal one, as well as the university. Uh, a quick overview about the today's session. So I'm going to talk about university, a bit of rankings now research, so you can better understand what, what we are, the entry requirements, the admissions process a bit, um, also our facilities and the also useful resource university has to provide and offer to, to all of you. Uh, let's begin with a kind of historical fact. So we were founded as an extension of Oxford University over 125 years ago. Um, then we became the University of Reading in 1926, and we are still, of course, nowadays the uh, University of Reading. As you can see on the background of my picture, those are the original building of the university. So when we were when we were founded as extension of the University of Oxford. Equally important is to highlight where we are. So as you can see on the map, we are really close to London. It's just 25 minutes by, by train from, from London, Paddington to Reading. Uh, we are also really close to Heathrow, which is the main airport or the biggest airport in the UK as well. But cities like Brighton, Portsmouth, Bristol, Cardiff, oh, they're really close to us. So the experience that you can get with us, it's uh, the benefit of being close to London, as well as basically being a bit outside London and enjoyed a uh, kind of a quieter life uh, as well. Uh, Reading, mm, town of Reading, it's uh, located in the so-called um, Thames Valley, eh, where companies like Microsoft or uh, Oracle, or Huawei, uh, Verizon, PepsiCo, they've got their uh, offices in here. And therefore, if when you're looking at threading, you could look at the kind of IT cluster where all those big giants are, are yeah, around uh, around us. OK, uh, not just in the sector, but also, as you can see, Bay in, in the uh, pharmaceutical industry, PepsiCo and the food and beverage. So there is variety as well. At the same time, it's it's also a regional hub for culture reading. Um, so we are really close to, to Oxford. We got our we got festivals, for instance. Uh, so. It is a good mix of being close to without being infected by, by London at the same time. So, okay. And also there is, as you can see on the on the right pictures, it's a really, it, we are in the country. There's a lot of countryside as well. So if you like to perhaps to switch off a bit and go for a walk, you can enjoy it, nature around, around us. So our university. So we are basically, as I said, founded as extension of Oxford University. Uh, we were the only university that we awarded the Royal Charter between the two world wars. And we are a truly worldwide community. So we've got, we've basically students nowadays, but we have been since for all around the world, academics too. And this is something that we're really proud of to be a really diverse and multicultural and really open um, uh, university as well. We've also recently won uh, the uh, five, we have five time winner of the Queen's uh, Anniversary Prize, which is basically the highest prize that you can get uh, as a UK institutions. Um, especially, we were uh, awarded this prize for climate change. Uh, it's because it's we are uh, really focused on and supporting our, and saving our planets too. And you can see also from the next picture what our campus looks like as well. So there is a lot of green. We, we do like green surrounding us. This is just uh, part of, of the campus. It's half of the campus, okay. With accommodations and uh, uh, schools, everything, it, it, it's inside the campus. Jumping to the university. Um, 
we are a research focused university, as you can see, the 90% of our research is worldwide recognized. Therefore, there is a, a lot of emphasis on this. For us, it's important and the benefit that you can get as a student when you are with us, it can basically interact with academics They're on top of their games uh, in their respective fields. Therefore, the interaction with, uh, between you and, and academics will be, be, I would say, really beneficial for your future career, for your studies. We are also to an top 202 in the world and the 94 percent of our graduates are in, in the works of or, uh, studied within six months and uh, this aspect uh, the career aspect i'll be touching upon later on but it's an aspect that's really important to to us too so we want to deliver uh, uh, degrees that can be also spent into the market as well um, in terms of subjects, where we've seen a lot of demands from students, but uh, where we also go got really good rankings in this sense. Uh, London Property Management, for instance, which is uh, has to do with uh, real estate, agriculture, uh, both at UG and master level, uh, psychology with the speech language therapy. Uh, we've got building that, that includes construction, construction engineering, marketing, uh, food science, architecture. So we've got subjects that they are um, top 10 in the UK. Uh, they're top 10 because A, they've got quality, a lot of um, quality linked to this, but also Equally, they are really perceived as a uh, as a good degree degrees from from the industry as well, and the combination of both, of course, is a kind of beneficial for the students. So students then will be able to uh, uh, benefit from the so-called quality attached to to our courses as well. Uh, let me just deep dive a bit into our into our research. Why it's important for us? This is important for us because it shows that our how uh, good we are in what we are doing in this sense, but also we want to do something that has got a wider reach. So um, we've got as academics on top of their games, but they're coming from all around the world. And this element of diversity is really important to us because it adds, brings uh, further uh, quality to the, to the teaching style and so on and so forth. This is something that we're really, really proud of. One of the key uh, let's say schools that we've got here at Reading, uh, especially now in the light of COP26, in the light of all the climate change, is meteorology and climate science. Uh, it's number two in the world for research. Um, so you may have seen also those stripes uh, as a part of the marketing campaign, as a part of government campaign, but those stripes were invented by a professor from the University of Reading, Professor Ed Oatkins, and then it's been, let's say, uh, then used widely to, to highlight the effect of climate change as well. We also have panelists, actually scientists within the uh, IPCC panel, which is the panel uh, that won the Nobel Prize. So we've got scientists that are advising uh, the United Nations on how to better tackle climate change. And this is one of the key things that we are really proud of, supporting the, the entire world and try to make a positive impact in, into the world as well. Uh, the other subject that is really popular with us and that uh, it's a lot of appealing, it's agriculture. Everything is linked to agriculture, food and health. Uh, as you can see, it's number 10, 12th in the world. So quality is there quality in terms of research, quality in terms of teaching. Um, agriculture, it's also linked to food because you can harvest something, but this, let's say, a potato or a tomato can then be eaten by a person. So we are studying also the impact of how perhaps, you know, uh, uh, the harvesting of potato or, 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 or tomato, doesn't really matter what it is, and how this game is going to have an impact on the uh, on the nutrition as well. And but we are doing this kind of really holistic approach because we have added also the climate change, how the climate change can have an impact on the agriculture, on the harvesting, and this can then have an impact on the on the food that we are constantly eating. We are also just to to the early business school which is our travel accredited business school. Uh, it's, it is a, a prestigious business school that we've got. Um, we are also home to the so-called e-commerce center, which is a dedicated center, a financial center, where basically uh, over under trading simulation uh, terminals, okay. Um, therefore students, just to take an example, you will be able to um, replicate what is happening within the stock exchange and London Stock Exchange. There are, I believe, 
eight minutes of lag between the London Stock Exchange and us, but it's a real, it's a real simulation. So uh, again, because we want to give the students the, a really the practical example, the one that's want to give them the practical, want to want to show how it works in reality, so they can uh, experiment themselves as well. In terms of courses that we are really popular with us, uh, we've got all the courses, of course, in London property management, uh, all the masters uh, in finance, the masters in management as well. Um, those are courses that are really, really, really popular uh, with us, especially within the within the business school. Um, when you're thinking about trading. Um, is to think a kind of, I would say, a kind of tiny village, okay? Uh, so we are basically a, a tiny village built into the town of Reading. The main campus, the one perhaps you've remember that uh, you have seen before is called White Nights. And it's um, the base, basically where most of our students will be spending their time. Uh, accommodations and school are inside the campus. There is also uh, wildlife as well. We've got geese going around, so it's, it's really, it, it's a really, I would say it's a nice place to, to stay to, to, and to study as well. Uh, we've got all uh, the sh shops inside the campus, there are, so everything is inside. That's why I'm, I'm using this kind of technology of the tiny village built into the town of Friday. Uh, we also have a second campus, which is called London Road, uh, where basically it's partially, it's my picture on my background, as well as the picture here yeah, on the uh, bottom right, which is the original part uh, of the university and the, it's the home to the great hall, which is used now for graduation ceremonies as well. But we also have another uh, dedicated campus for just to Ellie. Uh, it's called Greenlands, which is the original campus of the Ellie Business School. Um, students from Ellie can also have access to, to this campus, uh, and it's mainly for executive uh, education. Uh, we decided also to branch out to, to Malaysia as well, um, to offer students kind of the best of both worlds, in a sense, uh, UK quality education delivered overseas. So students that they start the course in Malaysia can transfer to Reading if they want or vice versa, as long as the courses are there. So it's, uh, if you perhaps are thinking of uh, exploring Malaysia or you want to start in Malaysia and then transfer to, uh, this will be also possible as long as the course is listed on both, um, on both institutions. In terms of quality of teaching, it is exactly the same. It's a UK uh, a standard. So academics, they have, of course, they are academics from the University of Reading. Okay. Um, in terms of course that we are offering, as you can see, we're offering courses in, in all these subjects from archaeology, architecture, to economics, to, to business, uh, to pharmacy, to computer science, food, to food. Um, so if you got an interest into a specific uh, aspect, for instance, of politics, well, we are offering courses both at the UG level, so undergraduate level, and the master level at the same time. Um, one of the key characteristics of our courses is that uh, we tend to have courses that uh, you can take optional modules, perhaps from some from different schools. Um, just to give an example to you, if you study law, you can take some modules from the uh, business school because uh, what we are trying to do is basically try to uh, uh, combine elements and one that can stay to can, can stay together okay uh, Bangladesh in terms of entry requirements for Bangladesh I've listed this those were uh, entry requirements because I wanted just to give a kind of an understanding to uh, to you. Um, so if you're interested in our, of course, uh, underrated courses, uh, you can basically uh, decide to do a uh, foundation. And then, of course, with your higher secondary school, unless you've got a British level or uh, equivalent, such as uh, IB, et cetera, et cetera. If you're interested in do a postgraduate degree, aka a master, if you have studied a Bachelor of Engineer of Science, okay, you can then have a direct access to our courses, okay? If you have studied, let's say, if you don't have a Bachelor of Engineer or Science, then you would need a master in order to have, a, to have an access to, to our courses as well, okay? So basically, it, um, what it's important, look at what type of degrees you've got and see whether you've got a Bachelor of Engineering or Science, then you can have a direct access to. PhD uh, level, mm, it reflects somehow what we are asking at PGT level, so at master level. However, the key aspect is your research proposal. The search, the, 
this, uh, the research proposal is basically uh, your uh, your idea, your concept that you want to develop. You want you've got a passion. You are passionate about this, so uh, it's important for you that basically you are doing your research. You are studying uh, the subject, and then you develop your proposal. And the, the key aspect within the PhD is, is basically it's the uh, uh, you need to find the um, the supervisor willing to uh, to supervise you, aka to support you doing doing your studies. Uh, English language, so we do accept the a wide a variety of uh, uh, let's say certificates such as IELTS, TOEFL, Pearson, etc. etc. Uh, we can waive English as long as you've got one of the listed uh, let's say certificates such as A level, IOIB, CBC, State Board, etc. Uh, I've just named a few because the list is quite long, but don't worry, you'll find the list there. We also as the wave IELTS as long as you've got one of the uh, of the of the listed uh, uh, English uh, language requirements. Okay. Mm, if you decide to apply for your our undergraduate courses, okay, but you don't have basically uh, your um, British level equivalent, we are also offering a foundation program, uh, which is basically is the bridge between uh, um, your let's say British A level equivalent and the access to, to the UG courses, okay. Uh, there are also scholarships available for national students for this. You will need to submit, of course, uh, a uh, your documents, your high school certificate, uh, ILTS, and then, of course, as soon as you start your course with, with us, you will be considered as a student of the University of Reading with full access to the um, to all the facilities and, and, and et cetera, okay. We are also partnering with uh, on-campus Reading basically uh, it's a provider so we are focusing on specific foundation in arts and design and some um, pre-master such as for business and art and design so if you wish or you're interested in studying business art and design and economics then perhaps uh, you can also consider this uh, as a kind of plan b or option if you wish to if you wish to um, professional courses. Um, it's a service that we are providing for those students. Perhaps they they are basically they are not having at the moment the uh, uh, requirement, the English requirements. Therefore, we are offering this support from that you can enroll with us. The positive things about the professional English that you've got a, a half band credit, which basically if you take the professional course with us, and then you need to achieve a 6.5 for instance by your chief a six um, you can still uh, waive your uh, english requirements because you you have started with us so it it is a, a good i would say plan b of if you um don't have your eyes uh, uh, results at the moment okay University, of course, offer, is offering a lot of scholarships. Uh, we've got, for instance, you know, a master scholarship. We we had the chief scholarships as well, but those are just few names that I've listed for for you. On the website, there are uh, many more of this. Uh, we also offer fully funded scholarships. What is important is that um, you need to have an offer from us. So you start the the application. You apply for any course you're interested in, and as soon as you receive an offer from us, you can apply for scholarships straight away. The um, the positive thing is that the, there are plenty of scholarships. So we've got uh, um, scholarship also that, for instance, that covers that covers uh, accommodations, school fees, and so on and so forth. So we've got a variety of of opportunity for you. Uh, great scholarships as well. So. But my but the, the starting point for you would be to have a, a a offer from us. So if you got an offer from us, then you can apply straight away for all the awards that are available on the website. Um, there will be a, a scholarship application as part as part of the uh, of the um, of the application process. And um, what is important? Let me give a couple of tips to to all of you. Uh, the starting point would be to place an application for the scholarship and explain why this award it's important to it's important to you uh, in those that are basically uh, looking at your uh, applications want to see your inner motivation your inner passion so and why 
this award can help you to achieve what you're interested in your next step as well uh, as part of the journey with us we are also offering uh, student support uh, in different aspects for english for instance um, we also have the so-called russo russo it's basically the uh, sport club and society where you can feel free to to join if you've got any passion cricket or sport or drama politics anything interested in you are more than welcome to uh, to join okay the last point let me let me spend a bit more time on the career service so we've got a fantastic career service and I would really encourage you to uh, to engage with them. I really want you to uh, really, I'm really encouraging you to spend time with them because if you're then thinking of staying in the UK after your uh, your degree, then you will need to to prepare your next step ahead of time and engaging the career service, engaging with with the, their professional specialists that will help you to uh, uh, basically progress into your next step as well. Okay. Um, let me say a couple of words and then let me spend a bit more time on the type of experience that students tend to uh, tend to tend to get okay uh, placements for instance especially at undergraduate level uh, where you've got students that they um, basically can go and spend time doing their study and work for uh, a company uh, and you'll be guided by by our expert with this so basically you, you'll be looking at which are the companies sectors that they are perhaps they're interested in uh in yeah, of course and then you, how you can reach them we've got also internship uh, over the summer we got also paid and paid holiday work it depends on your uh, basically your uh on your budget what you're interested in what you want to do we got also some work shadowing as well so where it's equally possible uh we got those so-called inside schemes where basically you got a kind of it's a kind of taste of what working for a specific company is is about okay next step uh, accommodation because i think it's equally important to explain you know where you'll be staying when you're coming and spend time with us and um, so we've got basically almost five thousand rooms on campus uh, they're really they're they're really close to uh to the um to, to basically to the to the main campus so you can just simply walk 10 to 10 to 15 minutes basically from the campus okay uh, we've got different options as a part of so so you've got standard rooms you can go for a uh, standard room with and suite they're all single room it depends on your of course your uh, a availability uh, what you're interested uh, and whether or not you want to uh, have a catered or self-catered options as well. So it depends, of course, on you've got a list of preferences as well. Okay. Uh, this is what the accommodation looks like, just to give understanding to you. So those are the accommodations. They're all single rooms, as you can see. Uh, hope you can see my mouse. Those are the kitchens. So you can share basically the kitchens as a part of, uh, of your uh, staying with them, but you may have your uh, let's say private bathroom it depends of course on your um, preferences we've got also uh, slightly <laughs> older accommodations like, like this one those are more kind of you know, a bit of um, Harry Potter of Oxford if you want to but they are equally good in terms of quality in terms of uh, service that you are providing to, to, to all of you library um, We've got in the center of the university. We've got our we've got our libraries as well. So basically, um, you can have access twenty four seven. Um, has been recently uh, refurbished. So if you need to go and get a uh, book or download a book because you need to study, you can absolutely do it um, anytime you want. Um, it's a good place to study too. So if you if you prefer studying in a library, so you, we've got specific as you can see like this one where you can spend time and studying there uh, in a really quite quiet place uh, facilities available so we've got different type of facilities available for sports cricket anything you're interested in uh, those facilities of course belongs to the russo which is the student union what it's what is important of course is um basically engage with the russo have a, ch have a chat with them and better understand you know uh, what is available and please please feel free to join them all because if you got a passion you got an interest then you are more than welcome to replicate what you're currently doing okay 
We also got, as you can see, kind of you know, tennis, tennis court. So any type of sports is 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 covered basically. Okay. Um, we are also offering kind of virtual tour. If you like to experience, see more about um, riding, so you got a chance to basically have a look at what is available in terms of in terms of uh, you know uh, campus, in terms of facilities, in terms of everything basically. If you like to know more. Uh, we are organizing dedicated webinars. Those webinars are basically uh, for career service, placement admissions, where we, we are bringing in experts from the uh, from the each department, and then they will talk to you through on uh, how to apply for placements, how to apply for career service, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and I would encourage you to join them because it's it's a really good it's a really good chance for you to to engage with. Okay. Oh, we've got our newsletters of course and our uh, social media channels so if you want to join feel free to follow us we are updating students with any questions they may have Perfect. thank you now i'm open to any questions you have hope it was clear and apologies if you had any some background noise with the today thank you very much Guru. thanks for sharing all the information and it was very informative i think it's going to have the most of the repair information they have. So we received a few questions from our viewers. So I'm going to ask you one by one. So first question is, how many scholarships do you provide? Which you actually mentioned in the presentation. You have 100, more than 100 plus university uh, uh, scholarship opportunity. But to apply for that, you still need to get an offer first. And what is the deadline to apply for a scholarship if there is any? <coughs> Thanks, very, very good question. So uh, let me begin to answer the, the first question. First question, so basically, um, we've got different type of scholarship at UG and undergrad level and master level. Um, we are covering all the subjects that are available. So for instance, uh, if computer science, let me use computer science as a subject in this case, uh, you can apply for a generic scholarships at computer science, but we also can apply for a mass uh, specific scholarships as, within the School of Computer Science, plus we also have uh, fully funded scholarships at computer science. So you've got basically three options that you can apply for. When you're looking at the so-called partially funded scholarship for computer science, there, there are also scholarships that they are covering uh, uh, accommodation as well for some STEM subject as well. So you've got a variety of opportunities there. My advice to all of you that listen to me now, it's to apply for all the scholarships that you can find on the website. Uh, it's because then there are chances there. And of course, you need to feel free to apply to, to them all basically. So next question, what about career perspective after graduation? How university will support its students for career perspective? Very good question. Thanks for, th thanks for, for this question. Yes, absolutely. Um, we've got a great career service, uh, one of the top 10 in the, in the UK. Um, we are supporting students even after they've completed the uh, degree with us. So they can simply join, join the career service, ask for further helps and support and so, and so on and so forth. What is really important for, the, for them is to be constantly uh, engaging with, with the career service, uh, but not do not leave until the end of your studies. Start from, uh, uh, start from the... Uh, they um, day two basically of, of your course with us start from the uh, as soon as you land go in and engage the career service because especially if you're planning your next step and you want to use the post of the visa introduced by uk government it's important for you to understand what it's available which type of opportunities sector and companies etc etc are there for you that's true that means you still need to be proactive from day one if they want to get a good uh, job or a better job opportunity after completing graduation because graduation is part of the process but to get a job you need to apply you need to know how to apply you need to prepare yourself for the interview also um, there are various process to follow where the career prospect uh, uh, career advising team can help the student but you still need to reach out there so yeah. that's, that's the most important thing i found lots of students that who actually get lost after graduation because they never visited care service team, they never talk, make connection with the university. So that's when they, they become frustrated because they're not getting the desired work. But they need to know where to look for it, right? They need to knock the right door. 
All right, the next question is uh, from one of the students. I completed my BBA major in finance from Brack University mm -hmm. in 2021, and I have one year voluntary social work experience. Can I complete my master's uh, MSc in international development? Uh, so very, very big question. Yes, you would need to, to apply, of course. Uh, the, um, the, the key things, of course, you need to meet the end requirements, but uh, you will need to apply for your master's in uh, international development, yeah. And in, in installed by the school GIDE, which is the Department of Agriculture and International Development, which is one of the top uh, departments that we've got here at the University of Reading, yes. Uh, a couple, a tip, if, if I may, with, with this. Uh, um, when you apply for specific courses, such as in the uh, international development, so on and so forth, um, explain to the, to the academic why this subject is important to you and how this specific school will help into your next step. Um, they want to see your somehow that you are passionate about you are mastering the subject but also kind of trajectory where this will be help you to land so buying studying msc in touch development okay i want then to get and work for a un or an ngo perhaps in, in south asia or i want to uh, join the fao or i want to so you've got your own preferences explain to to the academics why those things are important to you and how this can help you to get there Okay. Uh, do you accept Duolingo as an alternative in terms of ILTS? Good question. Uh, no, I'm afraid no. Uh, we don't. We do not accept Duolingo. We do accept a variety of other uh, English tests, but I'm afraid no. Duol do Duolingo no. Is there any internal test available for international students? A internal tests? Yes, we do have a so-called processional which is basically it's a, a course provided by the university where students will be involved and then it's considered an internal test if you pass the uh, precessional course then you can basically you you are uh, um, achieving your english uh, score of course there is a 0 0.5 uh, credit so half band credit if your threshold is 6.5 but you get a six but you've done a precession with us then we basically can somehow discount this uh, for you Oh, that's a good opportunity for this student. So, can this uh, is your professional course uh, online or this student can attend it face to face? So we have open uh, reopened the the the, uh, the, um, the campus, of course. So we've got option to do uh, some on campus and can also be done on online. But this needs to be discussed based on the availability first of all and. Uh, and depends also on the end requirements of the students, whether uh, he needs six, eight, 20 weeks, 40 weeks, it depends on the, on the, on these IELTS results, basically. Okay. So do you, um, lots of universities have a restriction in terms of a study gap, like they have five years cap, uh, some universities have four years, do you have anything like that at Reading University, or the student, if they don't have a relevant experience, if they complete bachelor in, for example, 2012, and after that, they're doing a very good job professionally. They can prove that they have a professional experience. Now they need another master's. Will the University of Reading accept, accept this kind of application? Uh, good question. So we are open, of course, to all the courses. Um, if we've got, for example, students that they've completed their bachelor in 2006 or, ma or master in 2006, and then they've got like 15, 20 years of working experience, and then decide to sample, they want to go back to the university. And we've got students that are coming from a different, uh, let's say, different background, but also they perhaps have uh, completed their studies 15 years ago. So it's it's not a problem for us in this sense, actually, no. Yeah, because we receive lots of students, like, you know, in terms of like marketing, marketing change a lot during this pandemic time now, it's more on online, way, like we're doing right now, yeah? Lots of the people who are graduated like 10 years, 15 years, they are not very familiar with this new technology. Some of them are not used to it, so then they might need an advanced degree in terms of digital marketing or any other related subject. That's why, you know, they might be have a long study gap. Yeah. Anyway, so that's good news that students can apply when, whatever their study gap is, if they have a relevant job experience, if they're doing a long but it's important, of course, it's, it, they need to have a, uh, basically, the, the, the um, 
they, they need to meet the entry requirements. This is the, the, the key, the starting point, of course. Uh, but if they've got 10 years of or gap of teen, it's fine. We've seen students, of course, coming with 10 years of working experience, and then they decide to upgrade the skills because, as you rightly said, the market is demanding for new and better skills as well. Okay, what about the safety measurement have taken by University of Reading for during this pandemic time? Very good question. So we've got a variety of measures in place. Um, our campus has reopened, of course. Uh, and what we, we have in place, for instance, we got a testing site for students to be tested. If they want to test themselves every day, they can do it. So they're more than welcome to. We add for the 21 uh, for this cohort, basically starting in last September, we had put in place a quarantine package which the quarantine package basically was supporting students that were coming from a red list country. We, re we really wanted this because um, we do recognize the importance of coming to the UK, the financial commitment that is linked to, to this as well. So that's why we wanted to uh, financially support them as much as possible, of course. Um, we also have, in terms of support that we are providing to students, we are providing any, any type of support. So you'll be assigned to a personal tutor as a, as, as a student. Any questions you may have in terms of, for instance, you know, uh, your school or any pro problems or anything, please reach out uh, to your personal tutor, uh, support departments. We've got everything is in place. Everything is in place for, for helping you, basically. Okay. So, uh, for, uh, sometimes, you know, for our undergrad parents, undergrad student parents, they become worried about student safety. Even I have a student right now who is studying online and who can apply for the visa, but his parent doesn't want him to go at, at the moment because the new variant came again. So that, this kind of thing that they need uh, assurance that if their son and daughter is going to study abroad without them, that they're in a safe hand. Also, is accommodation guaranteed for UG and PG students? So the accommodation, if you want to guarantee, uh, accommodation works in this way, you need to apply for the accommodation and there will be a kind of cutoff or kind of deadline for your, uh, for accepting. If you accept before the deadline, which tend to be the first of August each year, then it is guaranteed uh, for you. So the place you have chosen will be, will be guaranteed, of course, yeah. Is there any accommodation uh, for couples? Very good question. Yes, we've got a solution also for couples, uh, so-called mature students, those that, that they are perhaps, you know, they've got like 15 or 20 years of working experience as well. Uh, we also got solutions, uh, as I said, for, for couples that are bringing their children too, if they want. Uh, so again, the idea is to look after to look after our students. So we've got all the services in, uh, in place for, for them, including accommodation as well. Thank you very much. How is the student life uh, near Reading or is very close to London? You can say it's almost London. Uh, and, uh, so how is the student life there? Very good question. So it is a mix of, uh, it's benefiting a lot from, from London because you are really close to London. Therefore, you got the chance to uh, interact with students that they are, uh, so, so to go to London if you want to. Equally, if you want something a bit quieter, if sometimes you want to walk, you like the countryside, you want just you know relax, go to the countryside. We, we've got you know five minutes by train. You are just in the countryside in the, in the lovely England, in British countryside. So it's it's a good mix of things. Um, we've got students that, for instance, they want to have the right mix. They want to stay close to London because perhaps there is a an event at the theatre on Saturday, but they want to come back to Reading because they want something more quiet during the weekend. So, uh, well, if they shouldn't live near outside the campus, uh, how will, how they should budget their accommodation? Is it more expensive than university accommodation, or it is more budget friendly for the students? Very very good question. So we have also published a weekly cost, which includes food, book, books, clothing, entertainment, traveling, accommodation. Um, so my what I, as a personal advice I tend to give to students is to first of all look, look at what university has to offer in terms of accommodation for a couple of reasons number one you uh, if you're coming from let's say from overseas from from bangladesh and it's the first time that you're coming to reading you want to know where you're going to stay 
you want to have a safe place, you know that this place is there for you, waiting for you, no surprise. So you know that you pay a, a X amount per month, and this is what basically you uh, yeah. you get out of this. Okay. Um, in terms of the living cost, it's not as expensive as London is. It's cheaper than London. Uh, we are, of course, still in the south of the UK, so it's a factor. However, we've got the possibility if you, let's say, you want to perhaps uh, apply for a part-time job on campus, you can do it. So therefore, you can reduce your, your living your living cost as well. Um, living cost is also, let me say this, it's a really personal thing. It depends on your lifestyle, depends on your yeah, budget. But uh, on our website, we've published the uh, weekly costs. So it's a really useful guidance. So it's at least you see how much you need to spend every week in food or uh, in uh, clothes and so on and so forth, okay? Also, I believe that if they still live on campus, they have more opportunity to make more connections. Yeah. And also they can use university facilities all the time because they're very close to the campus. They're inside the campus actually, right? In terms of university reading. So that, that would be great for them in terms of the study and uh, make more connections. Okay, so is, uh, what is the minimum deposit uh, requirements to apply for CAS? So in terms of in terms of applying for CAS, if you, um, depends on the school. Some school, they don't have a you need to pay, like construction engineering, you need to pay 50% of the fees when you've got the uh, unconditional offer. Some school, they ask for a thousand pounds as a deposit. It depends on the school. What is important that you will, uh, will be stated on your offer letter. Uh, so please feel free to have a look at your offer letter because there will be a specific section for uh, uh, for your for your cast there. Okay. So is there any uh, pre-cast interview for the student? Um, if you are referring to a kind of pre-cast, no. Um, there might be interviews as a part of the application process. Some schools, um, for instance, in uh, uh, architecture, they ask for a portfolio and an interview okay. as a part of, so you get the chance to, yeah. How long it takes uh, uh, to, how, how, how long is the turnover time to submit an application and getting a knock? I would say them to be a couple of weeks. In some cases can be up to three, depends of the documentation they're providing. My advice to the students is, the more you submit or on your first, let's say, application or first communication with us, the better it's going to be because we can have a wider and better understanding of your transcripts, your past experience, your uh, SOP, and so on and so forth, and your motivation as well. So it gives you kind of more round uh, um, understanding of you as, as a prospective student. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. That's all from my side. There is no more questions uh, in our chat box. And thank you very much for joining with us today. And also hope all, all our students had uh, enough knowledge regarding the University of Reading. And I would like to add that Reading is just very close to London. So you can, like, as uh, Leo said, that uh, you can, you know, in the weekend, you can go to London, spend the night, and come back to the campus, join the class next day. It will be easy. Also, the communication is very good from uh, Reading. And University of Reading is one of the top one universities in the UK. So if you want to study University of Reading, it would be a uh, you know, great opportunity for you. And you should always make the application as soon as possible. Because Henley Business School, for especially for business students, is one of the popular business schools in the UK. And they're very demanding. So if you want to apply for their master's or for the bachelor, um, you need to proceed to start uh, your application as soon as possible. And last question asked that if I don't have English uh, at the moment, I don't have IELTS because I'm preparing for that. Of course, you can apply without those. Uh, you can get a conditional offer and you can submit your language condition or any other academic condition like references or previous as you can submit that later on. But it's important thing that to get an offer because there is a deadline for a scholarship application. So if you want, do not want to miss that deadline, it's, uh, it's really good that for the student that we apply for this process. Thank you, uh, Ludo. If you want to add anything or any suggestion for our Bangladesh student. Um. Actually, ask him a very good question. So my advice to to the students would be to. Um, in addition to what you just said, of course, if there are courses that they're interested in, do a bit of research also about the school uh, 
what the school does, but also try to understand what it's around the universities. Because if you're then thinking of staying in the UK after your master, for instance, and you want to find a job, so you need to understand, okay, what is around the, the specific university I'm looking at? Which type of companies? Which type of organizations? Am I close to London? Am I not close to London? Am, I'm passionate about computer science, for example. So, and this is a kind of IT cluster for, okay, uh, which companies are there? How can I reach those companies, for instance? This is, th those elements will need to also be considered added to your selection. Of, of courses and university because this will help you to perhaps make a, a choice that is close to what you like not just in terms of studies but also in terms of your next step it's equally important yeah it's very important to think before you apply and it because it's very important for your career perspective it will help not only help you to achieve a certificate it will help you to go and achieve your future goal Thanks, uh, Ludo. Thanks for joining us today and sharing all the information and your suggestion. Viewers, thank you very much for joining us. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to visit our office or you can contact us via Facebook, email, or WhatsApp. And you can call us today. Wish you all the best and stay safe. And also keep uh, maintaining social distancing as new variant is already you know, uh, spreading all over the world. So you need to be safe using masks and keep social distancing if possible. Stay tuned to Queen Education Facebook page to get all the latest updates about the university admission and the scholarship opportunity in the UK. Thank you, Ekin. Goodbye. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.